From its small beginning as a one-man tiger research project in 1988, the WCS India program has blossomed into a multifaceted research and conservation initiative under the leadership of veteran wildlife scientist Dr. Ullas Karan. A pioneer in the use of radio telemetry to study Indian tigers, Karant is also well known for devising an innovative scientific technique for counting them using camera traps. But despite his many scientific achievements, Ullas Karant isn't just an academic, but a visionary conservationist with a deep understanding of both ecology and society. This film outlines a pragmatic conservation solution that he has championed for over two decades. This is Kunia, a Jainu Kuruba who used to live inside a nature reserve in South India. One day, while out in the forest looking for honey, he had a horrific encounter with one of the most dreaded animals in the jungle, a sloth bear. This is Revan Nashetti a farmer who used to cultivate inside another reserve. Night after night, even as he tried to guard his fields, animals from the surrounding jungle would help themselves to his ripe crop. This is Vishwanatha, who used to live in a remote part of another South Indian nature reserve. Namga Rodilla, Salaga, Makalnakal Sleke, Idilla. Yarar Manele Saleg Bitu, Buskar Chikotu, Sale Makalan Wasta Ideve, Adakagi, when Kaile Bandru, Abba Bratre and Madlikagala, Kamledo Lekati, Hurba Kagate, Namana Naiseri, Hatu Seri Hoti, Malagal de la Kamble, Liburgi, two, Katu Hotru, Agli, Lamalas, Akudemakas, Patril Bandu, Tirodru, Ada Henano, Adetara, Wapas of Kamble, Hotunda Manekogi, Adakagi, Bada, Iladrona, Hogi, Barakadele, Jaga, Nordana. Pariyara nimmantavar yanaru jasthi pariyara kottre yon dheradha 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 jaga nodi thangandu Koora na makkalnaaro sali kalsi vidyabhyasa kalsa na nadu aasya gai nao kottre yon te hilte radhi Despite being the second most populated nation in the world with over 1.2 billion people India is also one of the most biologically rich countries on the planet its forests are home to half the world's wild tigers and Asian elephants. If these and other highly endangered animals have survived into the present day, it is thanks to India's nature reserves. However, although there are over 650 national parks and sanctuaries spread across the country, even the well-known ones are extremely small compared to reserves elsewhere in the world. Africa's Serengeti Reserve is 30,000 square kilometers. In contrast, India's Panna National Park is a mere 543 square kilometers. America's Denali National Park is 25,000 square kilometers. Compare this to India's Nagarahole National Park, which is just 645 square kilometers. To add to the problem of their small size, many Indian reserves have thousands of poor people living within them. Some have taken over patches of forest or grassland for cultivation. Some raise livestock, herding them into the jungle every day. And others collect a variety of forest products for sale to traders. 
Although their life may appear carefree and even idyllic, the truth is it is not one of harmonious coexistence with nature, but an everyday battle with the wildlife that surrounds them. Gore, elephants and other animals regularly destroy their crops. Tigers and leopards kill their livestock. And many are maimed or killed in encounters with wild animals. As wildlife populations have increased within nature reserves due to better protection, conflict too has increased, making life inside even more unlivable. At the same time, the rapid development and economic opportunities outside exert a tremendous pull. As a result, more and more forest dwellers are desperate to move out of the forest so they can carve out a better life for themselves and their children. Assisting them with fair and generous relocation out of nature reserves will result in two important gains. A better future for people outside and a brighter future for nature inside. Unfortunately, Poorly implemented resettlement schemes have brought a bad name to the very notion of relocation. But when it's done right, a move out of the forest can deliver equity and prosperity to people. One of the best examples of this is the relocation that took place from the 500 square kilometer Bhadra Tiger Reserve in South India. Until 2002, over 450 families eked out a hand-to-mouth existence in about 13 scattered settlements. Any time a family needed something, someone had to walk many kilometers to the nearest market, risking encounters with dangerous wild animals. During the dry season, the streams in the jungle could be traversed easily. But during the four-month-long monsoon season of torrential rains, the only way across raging waters were flimsy and treacherous bamboo bridges. Many settlers were old and infirm and extremely apprehensive about the future. <laughs> It wasn't just the people who suffered. Their presence had many negative impacts on the forest, including devastating forest fires. These fires were set deliberately every year for a variety of reasons, but mainly to clear the undergrowth and make it safer for moving around. Fanned by winds, the fires often went out of control and consumed everything in their parts. Often, they were severe enough to destroy hundreds of ancient trees that provided food and nesting space for a variety of wildlife. That wasn't all. Many settlers hunted illegally in the surrounding forests, decimating wildlife populations. They sometimes killed the predators that ate their livestock. And diseases transmitted by their cattle had deadly consequences for wildlife. It was by no means a happy or harmonious coexistence. In the early 1990s, conservation NGOs led by WCS began working closely with the government to promote the relocation of all 13 villages in Padra. While the government was willing to fund the scheme, many villagers were initially fearful of change. D.V. Girish, a WCS partner, patiently built up a rapport with them to understand their concerns. Over hundreds of discussions it became clear that while most of the settlers could see the tangible benefits of resettlement, they feared being short-changed. <coughs> Fortunately, key officials, including the district commissioner and the deputy conservator of forests, were deeply committed to the project and worked hard to ensure that the relocation was fair and generous. 
Girish was a vital bridge between the villagers and the bureaucracy through the long-drawn process. And finally, in 2002, people dismantled their houses in the reserve and moved to the fertile land set aside for them away from the forest. We were in the interior place. We were in the interior place. We were in the interior place. We were in the ODDS this is what the settlement looked like when people were just moving in. This is what it looks like 13 years later. A thriving farming community with modern houses and easy access to all amenities. Those who have worked hard, like Ramachandra, are prospering beyond their wildest dreams. Kabbalinda naivilik bandu naivil berwa kaya nam peristiwa nasten chana gili la. Ilik band mele nam ge er makla itu. Makla na wulle wulle English medium shalil wotsa kini nam gan kula itu. Nau kanselo nensil gili la. Adre nam nirikshe ko miri nam adaya bandi drinda nau makla nau education marci dibi. Nau ilik tumba utuma chana gitu. Nau wada da kon karit kandbi. Adre inda nam yaderi ti dag gili la. Nami ge tondre na gila nam budgeti tak kage miri adaya na kerisi. As for Ramachandra's old home, the Bhadra Reserve, it is flourishing after people moved out. Surveys by WCS show that prey numbers have more than doubled and tiger numbers have gone up from 7 to 20. While state funding is essential for the relocation of large villages, Government schemes rarely reach individual families scattered in remote wilderness locations. For them, relocation funded by the non-government sector can provide quick relief. An example of this is the privately funded relocation of eight families from the Kudremukh National Park, a biodiversity hotspot in India's western Ghats. Until 2004, these families tenuously occupied a tract of land in the center of the reserve with their 400 livestock. While their cattle competed with wild herbivores for fodder, setting fire to the surrounding grasslands was an annual affair. Forest department staff had a hard time battling these fires on steep hill slopes to stop them from spreading into the nearby evergreen forests. Often, by the time fire watchers reached a spot, the damage was already done. Thanks to generous donors, WCS and its partners were able to offer financial support to all eight families to buy land of their choice outside the national park. Once they were in possession of the new land, they moved out gladly with their simple belongings. Their abandoned houses were demolished and the land was relinquished to the national park. Within just a few years of people moving out, the vacated land began to regenerate and is now once again a peaceful habitat for wildlife. Even the relocation of one small settlement makes a huge difference to a nature reserve. With no more cattle grazing, fires and other human impacts, the land has a chance to heal. Relocation makes good economic sense for the government too. Bringing people outside is more cost effective than trying to deliver roads, electricity, education and health care to thousands of remote forest settlements. However, it is important to understand that a one-size-fits-all approach to relocation does not work. 
While farmers adapt relatively easily to life outside, tribal communities may need much more assistance and hand-holding. Despite this, more and more of them feel that a life outside offers the only chance of a better future for them and their children. Rajappa of the Jenu Kuruba tribe moved out of the forest a few years ago. He is now a strong votary of fair relocation. The truth is, unlike the San people of the vast Kalahari Desert in Africa, or hunter-gatherers who live cut off from the outside world in the Amazon forest, most forest dwellers inside India's tiny nature reserves are already in advanced stages of transition to modernity. They aspire for all the things we take for granted. Steady incomes, secure housing, health care and education for their children. Most of them continue to live in the forest not because they enjoy it, but because they lack the resources to relocate. While forcing people to move out of nature reserves is clearly wrong, compelling generations of them to remain hopelessly marooned inside is no less unjust. The notion of harmonious coexistence between growing numbers of people and growing numbers of wild animals within India's small nature reserves is a utopian dream. Anyone who romanticizes the lives of forest dwellers has clearly never lived in a forest. The constant conflict with wildlife is an unending struggle and risking one's life every day in the pursuit of diminishing forest products is a no-win proposition. What kind of a future can the children of forest dwellers look forward to if they continue to be stuck inside nature reserves? And what kind of a future will it be for India's nature reserves with thousands of people living inside? The lethal combination of hunting, setting fire to the forest, cutting trees for timber and firewood, grazing livestock and collecting vast amounts of forest products for bottomless global markets negate the very purpose for which these reserves were created. Enabled to relocate with dignity and afforded the right opportunities and exposure to the outside world, at least the younger generation of today's forest dwellers will no longer need to depend on the forest for a livelihood and will have a chance to escape the grip of poverty and deprivation. Nature reserves collectively occupy only 5% of India's landscape as the last safe havens for many critically endangered species that have nowhere else to live, they need utmost protection. But conservation is not just about saving animals. The forests we protect in the name of tigers and other wildlife contain priceless genetic resources. They sequester vast amounts of carbon and are the birthplaces of hundreds of rivers that ensure water and food security for all Indians. Without these ecosystem services, sustained economic growth would simply not be possible. Ancient India had a remarkable ethos of conservation, where nature was deeply intertwined with religion, culture and daily life. Today, this has given way under the pressures of over 1.2 billion people and their rising material aspirations. If 
India's extraordinary biodiversity is to survive in all its variety. We must start treating nature reserves as modern-day sacred groves. Since most reserves are already hemmed in from the outside by human use, protecting them from incompatible human activities inside is vital if they are to retain their ecological integrity. Fair and generous relocation is a win-win solution that can provide new hope to both impoverished forest dwellers and India's priceless nature reserves.